good material planning is crucial to the success of a manufacturing company. It's important that we have the right parts at the right time, in the right quantity, and in the right quality to be available to make what we need to make, to support our customers' orders, to provide that desired customer service level without carrying excess inventory, without having an increased inventory investment. So having the right parts at the right time, in the right quantity, and at the right quality is paramount to the success of a manufacturing company. In visual, material planners, schedulers, purchasing um, folks have great visibility of everything they need to know from a material planning standpoint in something we call the material planning window. Let's go take a look at that window. Here we're looking at one part, it happens to be a purchase part. But this could be a sub-assembly, it could be a finished good. This one just happens to be purchased by someone named Skip. Skip's responsible for this part and some other parts as well, some other materials. Here in the material planning window, Skip can see everything he needs to know about that part. So as you can see at the top, I've got some information. What do I have on hand? A simple drill down will take me to all kinds of information. For example, where, in what warehouses, in what sites, uh, at what locations are these goods stored? What have I purchased or sold in the past? If it's something I make, what does its bill of material look like? Where is it used? I can even see things like requisitions that have been placed for this part, RFQs out to my vendors. Who supplies this part? What are, the, I have two qualified vendors in this case. What are their quotes? What, uh, what are the price breaks? Do I have a preferred vendor? Do I prefer one vendor over another? So all kinds of information is there for me to drill into. Um, I also, if I'd like to have that information a little more in my face, I can turn on, a user can decide that they'd like to see, um, maybe have a, a, a prevalent or a, uh, a always sitting here view of where I stand with my parts or um, oh, are there alternative parts or let's look at information about that vendor. And of course, I can drill into these graphs if I choose to. There's also a configurable table to put information just kind of in my face instead of, um, instead of that, that drill down we were doing earlier. Although one click to that drill down isn't such a bad thing. Let's go look at some more information that we're seeing on this, on this very screen. Down here um, in the lower half of the screen, what I'm seeing is a complete supply and demand analysis for this piece of material, for this kind of material, for this bearing in this case. And what do I mean by supply and demand analysis? Well, in blue, I can see every demand for this item. In this case, I've got a few orders, quantities uh, that are needed and due dates that those orders are needed. So these are all of the demands on this part that have not yet been satisfied. They've not yet been issued. In green, I'm seeing sources of supply. Well, since we're looking at a purchase part, those sources of supply are purchase orders. I can see when they're due to come in and how many are left to come in. What that allows me to do is have this projected quantity on hand going right down the middle there in yellow that shows me very clearly what my theoretical position, inventory position will be over time. I can see where I've got a problem. So let's look at how this works exactly. Right now, I see I have 20 on hand. Well, I've told the system that I want to hold um, 20 back in safety stock. So theoretically, I really am in a net zero position, theoretically. The first thing that happens is I'm planning to get five more, so that'll bring me up to five, theoretically. Then I plan to add to those five another 215 pieces used to, which will give me a net of, of 218. Need 10 more, now I'm down to 208. You get how this is working. 
Well, as soon as I am theoretically out of inventory, it shows me where that will be, what orders are affected. So these two orders, if I don't get um, more material, then these two orders are gonna be short. I can clearly see that in the exception message that's over here on the side. Now this screen is more than just informational. I can take any action that I might need to as a planner or scheduler um, to ensure that we don't fall into a shortage scenario here. So for, for this item, it could be that I want to buy. Up here at the top, I can purchase to inventory. Or if I want to buy and tie that purchase directly to these two orders, for example, I could buy to a job. Well, let's say that mm, instead of buy, placing a new purchase order, maybe what I wanna do is call this vendor on this purchase order for 215, and let's see if we can't add another 15 pieces, which will get me out of hot water. So let's do that. Let's drill into this purchase order. Here's that particular PO for 215 pieces. Who do I buy from? Uh, Christopher, here's his phone number. I'm gonna give Chris a call and say, hey Chris, um, I know I ordered 215. I really need another 15 pieces. Can you provide those? And hopefully Chris says, absolutely. Um, and I update this purchase order, send him a copy via email or however I communicate with him. You know, I may um, send that to him via email, might print it and um, send it snail mail, whatever your pre preference is, but I'll get him a copy of that change order and when I come out of this screen and back into my material planning window, I can see how, I am, uh, how I've affected that plan. So now this part is in good shape. I'm not carrying too much excess inventory and, um, and I have enough to cover my requirements. So that's, that's great. That's one way to use this window. Now, when I opened this window, uh, I was already, I had drilled into a particular part but let's look at what a, a planner or a scheduler may do. Um, when they come in, when they come into work, they might receive um, tasks, activities. They might be looking at, let's say, a material planning report or a order point report. They might be looking at the results from MRP. But um, often that those reports, the, that information is gonna drive them to the screen. They'll wanna to come to the screen. So let's take a look at what this would look like. If I'm a, if I'm a oh, let's say I'm Skip, and I want to know what should I be doing today to ensure that the material plans are valid for those items that I'm responsible for. So I would come to the screen, I would do a search, I'd say, well, I'm a buyer and my name's Skip. I only care about purchase parts in this case. I can put other filters here, of course. I could ask the system, hey, just show me those items that I should be releasing or things where I should have already cut an order for these. But in this case, I'm saying, oh, I'm Skip, show me all my parts that I should be doing something with. So let's do a search and look at at um, Skip's to-do list. So Skip has a short to-do list, relatively short here. It's only got, what, eight, 10, 12 items on it. So if I'm Skip, I'll either print that, or if I want to be paperless and work off online, then I'll probably start with that very first part. And sure enough, I've got some. I've got quite a few, actually. But by the time we get to this last requirement, on 422, I'm going to be short on that item. So I could go ahead and cut a purchase order straight from here if I needed to. Um, it only has a two day lead time. Maybe I don't need to cut that yet. And, um, and if I'm skip, I'll take the action that I need to, whether that's create a new purchase order, create a new work order, create a, um, a transfer order from one location to another but when I've resolved my issue that the system's pointing out to me here, then I'll move to the next item in the list. Here's the next item, same goes. This, this one also needs to be 
um, needs to be ordered. So what's happened as we've clicked down and said, Go, take me to the next one on the list, here's Skip's to-do list, we've moved to that second item on the list. And if we continue to move, we'll move to the third and to the fourth item on the list. Now we're on that fourth item on the list and see how the system has kept up with me there. So the material planning window is one of the great tools within Visual that allows material planners, production schedulers, um, purchasing folks to be able to see the actions they should be taking, understand um, why the system requires parts or why we may have uh, items that have become excess. I can drill into as much information as I need to see to make good decisions and then take action on those decisions. So you, uh, this window leads you to more confident decisions to allow you to solve problems faster and get great results. The material planning window in visual.